Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com, bitamountlive.com, and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, April 23rd, 2021, and this is our weekly video. We take a sort of a roundup of the week, what's been happening in our little part of the world in the Asian art market, what things that we've seen, uh, what's happening on the uh, global member pages over on Live Auctioneers, what's happening over on uh, the new bitamount.com live site, which is coming along just great. Uh, what's happened on eBay in the last week and, uh, and other things as we always do. A couple of things I wanted to mention, a little housekeeping. Uh, we started doing it last week and I, we might have mentioned it last week, but we've been cleaning up the uh, homepage because now that we have the two sites up, it's getting a little confusing maybe for some people and I understand why because they have the same name and one of them just says live on the end of it and that's for things for our users and um, uh, uh, dealers and people that want to sell things uh, 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 on online. Uh, we've set up a site for that of course and that is over here on the right. So if you come to the bitamount.com uh, site, you're going to see this bitamount.com and bitamount live. You are here and over there is this. So you just click that and it'll take you to the other site. Because I had a couple of people email me saying, I heard you, you have a way to sell things on the site, but I was on bitamount.com and I couldn't find it. All right. And that's maybe my poor communication skills. I don't know. But at any rate, we've straightened that out. The other thing we've done also is that the uh, preview assistance service and the identification assistance service has been moving up the page so it's a bit easier to find. Uh, a lot of people get to the page and if you're using a phone, especially the way it was set up before, if you scrolled your phone, you'd be scrolling for a week to get to the bottom because the page was so big. So what we did was we fixed that. And this, the IDA assistant, those of you who don't know about it, if you have an item and you, you don't know uh, how much it's worth and you, you, you want to send it to us, you can. We charge a modest $12. We'll take a look at it. We'll, we'll tell you roughly what we think it is, how much we think it's worth and so forth. And the preview assistant is over here and this is where you can submit up to three links for things you're looking online at auctions anywhere in the world and ask us uh, what uh, what we uh, think of it all right and uh, um, we get a lot of them all right and it's fun it's fun to see what's around um, and I, we find sometimes very curiously people will be looking at something in an auction but they download the images and then upload them through the identification assistant program there's no need to do that just send the links from there um, we're not going to steal your lot on you we've helped people buy some pretty amazing things in the last year um, and uh, they've sent us the links we've gone to look at the auction house checked it all out for them and come back to them and said go buy the thing all right. As a matter of fact, it happened yesterday with something that's amazing that's in an auction. I can't say where it is because the person paid us to, to, to look at the item. And uh, he's going to uh, probably make a huge amount of money. <laughs> huge. At any rate, that's cool. Uh, now, on to uh, this. The, sh uh, the lower section here we've cleaned up also. We've also added at the bottom of the museum lookup list, this, th this page here, all these green boxes are links to museums. We've added the National Museum of Korea. Uh, it's a great collection and, and uh, it, it, they've, they've managed over the last few years to get a lot of what they have online. It's a great research uh, tool uh, if you have a piece of Korean pottery and you want to look it up. All right, and the other place that we added is a museum in Bath, England, the Museum of East Asian Art. Great museum. They're sort of closed right now because of the virus and so forth, but uh, a good part of their collection is online and um, uh, it's worth looking at. On the left side, we've added some uh, new dealers, people that we know, people that we've interacted with over the years. Uh, the, one of the first ones we added was the antique store in Paris. This is run by Christine Ortega, and she is a lovely person. She works with Katowiki, um, helping them with their uh, listings and authentication, along with Carlos Santi and all the folks over there. And she has a very nice store in Paris. She has some good inventory. Uh, she's not crazy with her prices. She, I think she's pretty reasonable and a uh, nice person. Uh, the other place we added was uh, for people that are uh, into it, uh, ben, um, uh, ben Jansen's uh, website, Oriental Art, uh, some very cool Buddha stuff, great material. Uh, Nicholas Fornery has been on here for a while. He always has nice things. And we've also added Marchance in London, Ralph Chait Gallery, and Shax in Hong Kong. Uh, and Shax is William Shack, and he's the very, very famous uh, 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 dealer. He's been around. He's handled some of the best pieces. Well, they all have, but he's in the China. In China, he's particularly famous. He's a great. He's a, he's very interesting guy. Um, and then Marchance, of course, in London, uh, London one of London's uh, premier uh, dealers of Chinese art. They've been around for generations at this point. And the Ralph Chait Gallery in New York, which also multi generational family uh, uh, store, great things, um, nothing but the best. Okay, and uh, so you want to check them out. You can do it. You know, you can go. You can browse. You can ask them questions too. Uh, uh, they're 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 all there to do business and get to know. All right. Now the other thing I wanted to mention was. 
Uh, let's see here. The um, new website, the Bitamount Live site, uh, we've made some changes this week. We've added uh, images now to the homepage of things that are posted on the site. We picked up a lot of listings over last weekend, and we picked up a lot of new dealers, and I see a ton of photographs in the queue. Uh, people will upload their images, and before they do the descriptions, they're going to get all the pictures up, and um, I, I can preview some of them. We have been search engine optimizing the images on here for our sellers so that uh, uh, we've been adding alt tags, descriptive tags, descriptors, and then we're starting to post them um, over into a page set up for it on our Pinterest account, and uh, we've been posting some of it onto uh, the bitamount.com uh uh, Facebook page, and we'll be doing more and more, and that's going to be building up uh, as we move along and uh, so forth. But here is the uh, here are some of the things that are up, and then there's more things on here. We had picked up some nice uh, uh, early pottery pieces this week. Uh, we even put a, a couple of things on, a, a nice Tang uh, recumbent Campbell, Campbell that we're selling for an estate and so forth. Uh, and you can check all that out and good things. And uh, then over to, uh, hold on a second here. Do, 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 do. There we go, this page here. Um, this just give you an idea. This is Nordic Antiques over in Sweden who's uh, joined the site and put up a bunch of things. I'm not promoting them specifically. I'm just showing folks when they set up their store, this is what it can look like. Uh, it's a free thing. We, it's not like eBay. We don't charge for stores. You come and you set up what you want. And uh, as a dealer, uh, you can put in here in these boxes and provide information and other things about uh, the vendor biography, review products, and so forth. You can put in your own contact information. You can put your phone number in there. You can link to your own website website if you have additional things for sale well, it's fine don't worry about it somebody asked me I have a website with a few of my own things on it too can I can I put a link in just in case I said absolutely put a link in all right um, um, we're not we're not here to try to control your life we're, we built this site so that everybody could conduct good business and uh, 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 and be successful and we charge as everyone knows probably the lowest commission rate in the world right now on any selling site and uh, because that's not we, we did this to help, you know to sort of satisfy and make all of our regular users, uh, visitors to our own site, uh, happy. So that's what we're doing. All right, now over to uh, what's happening here. On the global member pages, some interesting things. One of the things that popped up this week, this is Lion and Turnbull has this. If you're a Japanese textile buyer, this is an absolutely fabulous pair of uh, tapestries, Japanese tapestries, probably Meiji period, beautifully done silk, that heavy silk, very, very elegant, very lush. And these things are huge. They are 213 centimeters uh, long, so they're roughly seven feet long each. And there's two of them, um, and they're coming up. They have a very modest estimate. I think the estimate is peanuts. Uh, it's like 1,500 pounds or something. Um, but beautifully done textiles. If you're a textile buyer and you're looking for something great to hang, uh, I, would, I, I would say you buy these, and you have them nicely uh, uh, framed under nice UV glass so they're not, they're not getting killed by sunlight. Uh, put them under museum glass even better and hang these in, in a room, dining room, living room, master bedroom, hall something and they would be absolutely great the colors are exceptional the colors on these are just wonderful the expressions of the faces are good they you need to get it framed and get these little areas here flattened out and tidied up easy enough to do and you'd have one heck of a pair of tapestries hanging on your wall anyway i love those 1500 to 2000 pounds seems like nothing to me um, for, for something of that quality and this big and these do not turn up often very, very nice. And then over here, this was something that sort of fell through the cracks last week at an auction. Uh, this this is an enormous piece of satsuma. It is uh, 16 inches in diameter, great big pot, uh, beautifully done, signed, um, at the bottom, this was at Mike Hands Auctions out in Almeida, California, and it signed on the bottom uh, Satsuma um, uh, Odazao. Uh, I got to say this right, Gyokuzen. All right, one of the famous uh, uh, Japanese Satsuma painters uh, studios. Absolutely great quality. Went for fifteen hundred dollars. The estimate was crazy low, and the and the selling price I think was extremely reasonable. We put this on the newsletter page, and uh, somebody here asked me what I thought it would bring, and I said it ought to bring three to five thousand. It's a heck of a big one, sixteen inches in an unusual form, very unusual form when it's done like this. But the detail work was just exceptional, and I think somebody got a great buy, and I hope it's one of our users. All right. The other thing, these are coming up here. These close in a few days. Uh, in two days, uh, and they're estimated at $1,000 to $1,200 is another one. This is at Charleston Estate Auctions down in Pleasant, South Carolina. They apparently got into a house. They had, they had two very nice pieces of signed satsuma. There's this one and 
this one, a big, big vase. This thing, I think it's 25 inches tall with a $2,500 to $3,000 estimate, which is not unreasonable and uh, at all. And it's a, a beautiful pot. Let's see here. Uh, signed on the bottom. Um, there we go. There's the Shimazu crest. And you can go look up the signature in your Satsuma book and see whose it is. They may have it in the description anyway. I didn't read the whole description all the way down. It's quite long. But at any rate, heck of a nice piece of Satsuma. There's two of them. Um, I'm not sure why this one is estimated so low. I'm not sure. It was uh, uh, 13 inches tall, pretty good height. Uh, maybe they're just being conservative or something. But if you're a Satsuma buyer, you want to check these out. This one even has the uh, has the sort of incense burner shaped foot on the bottom here and here. Uh, rather interesting. Anyway, uh, check that out if you're a Japanese buyer. And then over here in um, uh, tomorrow, if you're a, a book buyer, I left a bid on this thing just to get it started about two weeks ago. I think I left you know 100 bucks or something on it. Anyway, this is the famous book. Uh, uh, China for the West by uh, by uh, John Ayers um, and David Howard, David Sanctuary Howard, uh, two two top whizzes of uh, Chinese export art. Uh, this this set usually sells for about four hundred to six hundred dollars a set, and uh, right now it's up to one hundred and forty. Go in and leave a bid on that. And this is at Jeffrey Evans Associates in Crawford, Virginia. So if you're buying it in the U.S., you can have it sent book rate, which is about four dollars. All right, but that's a very nice set. This is a big book. This is an oversized uh, uh, sort of folio book. At any rate, very, very reasonable. Their estimate was w way low, it was about a quarter of what this book is worth. So check that out. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that Tremont Auctions up here in Massachusetts, I mentioned them last week because, we, we, as you recall, we, I talked about this plate that I thought was so interesting, this uh, Chinese Amari type of plate, Kang Shi period probably. But... Looks so much like Japanese Amari. I've, I've gotten, I got, I think I got four emails from people saying they swore this was Japanese when they first looked at it, and then when they look at the back of it and look at it in a bit more detail, they realize it is Chinese. Very rare. It should do quite well. It's going to go through that estimate of a high estimate of five hundred dollars, I think, pretty easily. And they also have in their sale a lot of nice armorial wear. Tremont Auctions. Uh, the sale is to, uh, on on uh, Sunday. Okay, the sale is on Sunday. You have time to get a hold of them. Um, uh, get in touch with either Jimmy Callahan or Brett Downer. Um, uh, I just think it's a, a really, really nice, uh, uh, nice little sale they got there. Good stuff. And uh, then over on the uh, uh, newsletter page on Bid Amount, uh, how, this is the page uh, uh, where we put things that we find each week and sort of vet them and stick them on here and see how things go, uh, things that we would we would say are okay to buy. And uh, they, the week was pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Here's the list that we plucked it all from in this. There, was, there were two lots of uh, Chinese uh, Mandarin porcelain in this palette. This is a very, very early type of Chinese um, uh, Mandarin palette uh, expert porcelain made in the 19th century but absolutely top quality this is the, this is this is the really top quality stuff uh, all the beautiful shading the good enamels lots of use of gilding uh, thick greens and so forth uh, there's this one and there's a detail of it and I thought they were wonderful these were absolutely great these are just two eight or nine nine inch dishes and in the end they did just fine they brought seven hundred and twelve dollars or about three hundred and fifty dollars a piece which I think was a bargain I think those are the, this this quality doesn't turn up very often that's why I'm saying that and then they had this platter, a 20-inch platter, done in the same color palette, same feeling, uh, beautifully done with this overglazed blue uh, enamel Greek key, uh, these frames, and then these other frames here with gilded fruit and so forth, and these very elegantly drawn um, Iraqi outcroppings coming up with people in boats going by. And it's sort of this is sort of a, a compressed three-dimensional scene of, 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 of water in the foreground, and these people are on a log raft, which you see often in Chinese art. And uh, then somebody is riding a horse along behind them, floating along, and uh, a lot of whimsical stuff in here. The, you know, the horse is in the water, in other words, or coming from the water. And then the water l laps up to the rocks, and then it's sort of compressed further uh, right up onto the steps of, of, of a palace or, or gov you know, some sort of high-ranking official's home. Absolutely fabulous-looking uh, piece of porcelain. And here's a picture of the back. Looks right as rain, circa 1825, 1835, somewhere in there. The plates ended up selling for $4,816. Um, and, and, and the only rose mandarin that typically reaches that kind of money are giant punch bowls. And... Um, this was a big platter, but it was one of the nicest ones that's been on eBay in quite some time. Really is. Really good one. And uh, then over here to this, this Noyinja Straits uh, vase with this, this double gourd uh, uh, scene with script 
and, and figures inside of it. This is a big pot. This was, I think it was around 25 inches tall. Here's a side shot, you know, very powerful royal blue on his nice dark blue, and then a lighter blue uh, attached to the flowers and the bats and so forth. This beautiful ruby red neck and on and on and on. Nice looking one, good detail in the drawing. This is the kind of thing you want to look for. Uh, get into a facial scene like this and look at the way the eyes are done, the, the, the minor details around the eyes, the use of the red lines, the expression on the face, the pursed little lips and so forth, the way the hands are done, the way the whiskers are done. This is how it should look, all right? And the same thing with the kids. Take, take special note when you look at these porcelains of the aspects of the faces and so forth. Uh, it'll help you a great deal to avoid fakes and copies. And uh, this is the bottom of it, sort of a messy thing down there, which they often are. And you have that, uh, that sort of iron, ironed out, uh, iron red uh, from firing uh, uh, on the unglazed foot rim. And then you have these blue enamels creeping down and sort of blistering under here. Um, that's not unusual. They started putting these blue bottoms on things in the 18th century. Uh, somebody asked me when they started using those first, and that's when they first did it at Chinlung Basis. At any rate, um, it ended up selling for $3,238. Uh, they dated to the Tung Shi period. I think it might be a little bit later, but these are sometimes a little difficult to date, but they're not off by much. 24 inches tall, heck of a nice vase for that. And uh, Neonia Straits, which are very, very collectible with that color palette, uh, excellent. And then over here to this was a, a really great ivory fan that came on. And I pointed it out last week, uh, uh, here it is, really, really fine. I know you're not supposed to sell ivory on eBay, but a lot of people do. And um, the detail work on this one was quite excellent all the way around. Uh, for some reason, they shot the back of the fan more than they shot the front of it. There's the front. Um, I think they got confused. There's the front of it right there. Very nice relief carving on it, beautifully done. And it looked to be in quite excellent condition. The primary long blades on the ends are deeply carved in good shape, and all of these look good to me. And uh, in the end, it did really well. It ended up bringing $1,734, which is a good bit above what the typical ivory fan brings. This was a seller over in the UK, so we can ship it pretty easily anywhere in Europe anyway. Uh, you'd have a tough time getting that in the United States, the way things are, but... Uh, that's, uh, that's the way it is. And the thing that's interesting is that the monogram plaque has never filled out. So if you really, really, you, know, you could buy it and put your own monogram on there. Have some fun with it. And at uh, any rate, uh, $1,734 was the final selling price on that. And uh, very nice. And then paintings. There were a couple. There was one seller that had a couple of very charming uh, uh, late Qing paintings up there, probably from, from these are leafs probably from an album, uh, which they often did. They put together and they'd have eight or 10 or 12 paintings. And uh, this was a rather nice one, late Qing, early Republic period, but very nicely done, very stylistic. Uh, uh, two lovers on a, on, a, on a beautiful patio, sort of, uh, uh, you know, just hugging each other. And absolutely charming and a nice couple of garden barrels. Here's a fan that she, she somebody has dropped in a moment of maybe... Uh, uh, passion, who knows, and um, the, these beautiful stands and ferns and flowers and vases and so forth, and this very, very nicely drawn balustrade going around them. An absolutely lovely painting, really was. Um, I thought this was true. Well, what's wrong with the pictures? There we go. Uh, nice facial expressions, very calm, very serene, and beautifully done beautifully shaded and colored. And uh, this went very reasonably $292. Not bad at all. That was a heck of a nice uh, picture, clearly old, and uh, of very, very good quality. I think that was a wonderful buy frame. That would look terrific. And then over here to this was, the, I think this was the same seller, had this beautiful cluster of flowers, also about the same era, late Qing dynasty, beautiful deep red seal marks all over the place, script and so forth. Uh, the, the painting quality was quite nice. Here are the flowers, uh, very nice shading up through here. Um, uh, uh, absolutely lovely. And also within its silk mat. And this one for just $220. Yes, it's the same sell seller. Uh, what is it? Bay Point Home De Deco. I don't know who he is. He's down in Texas. Uh, but two very nice Chinese paintings. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, you could have bought the two of them, delivered to your house for under 600 bucks. That was a great buy. And then on to this, the transitional period ovoid jar that we talked about last week. Because 
a very nice one. It had been drilled in the bottom, had a very obvious drill hole, it had been made into a lamp at one time. For some reason, they drilled an awful lot of late Ming and transitional vases into lamps, uh, mainly because, well, part of it was because back in the 1920s and 30s, there was this one a shortage of good-looking lamp bases, and, and decorators discovered these, and the Yamanaka Company and other places uh, began supplying them for lamps. Yamanaka used to make a lot of lamps, and they had stores in Boston and New York and Chicago and so forth. And uh, this beautiful transitional jar um, was drilled out and made into a table lamp at one point. All right, there it is. Nice looking drawing, classic tra transitional work. Uh, and it's partly because at the time they weren't that expensive. Um, they were sort of considered the, the transitional pieces in the 1920s were sort of viewed as the items from no particular reign. It was sort of a, a, a weird hiatus period between the, uh, the among for the kilns between the end of the Ming and the beginning of the Qing. And um, there wasn't a great deal of scholarship on it until the, really the Butler collection got formed. And all of a sudden, everybody went, wow, these are undervalued. At any rate, this one did pretty well. It brought $2,750. And it would have brought probably another 1000 or 1500 pretty easily had it not been drilled. But if it hadn't been made into a lamp, there's a pretty good chance it wouldn't be around today because it would have been broken. Table lamps, vases that are made into table lamps seem to last a remarkable long period of time because they don't get moved around much. People take care of them. They know their lamps. They know they can break. And they tend to get put in the, in the safest rooms in the house, the least used rooms in a house as well, called the living room. And uh, there they sit for decades and uh, survive. So anyway, that was a nice jar, a beautiful jar. And then on to this, the robe, this vibrant robe. This is an old robe. Uh, but in absolutely fabulous condition. And when I first looked at this, I said, Jesus, is that thing even old? Because of the condition was so good on it. You look at the interior, the liner is, is beautiful on it. Uh, you look at the collar up here, there's not a lot of grit and gunk around it. The silkwork looks very, very good. And uh, here's the colors, still extremely vibrant, but, but this is an old robe. Uh, but but these robes, if you got one of them, uh, you know you know from the loom or someplace uh, back in the day, or somebody who gave it as a gift, they were always kept in very dark places. This one was obviously meticulously cared for for a long time, for a hundred years, and ended up uh, here we are. And this was a seller down in uh, Newport Beach, California, and it sold for six thousand one hundred dollars. But an absolutely, she called it vintage. It isn't. This is late late Qing, early Republic, but beautifully beautifully done. Beautifully done. And uh, then on to this, this bowl. I, 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 put, I put this on the list to watch it because it was about to close. This was uh, something from uh, uh, F.J. Haffelman's, this uh, nice-looking uh, Kang Shi period reticulated uh, open open work bowl right here. Very pretty little example. And uh, sold, I think, for a reasonable price, um, uh, uh, $711. And he points out the description, Devil works, Devil's Work Bowl. Um, that's what they used to, uh, one of the old, that's sort of a dealer uh, trade term that came out of the Chinese dealer because of all the work that it took to make it. Uh, all this carving, all this reticulation, beautifully done. And um, it ended up selling for $711, which I think is fine, absolutely fine. Nice looking bowl. And then this, the pair of gin bottles. Well, they used to call them gin bottles in the trade anyway. A pair of Kangxi square jars that were then clobbered um, when they got to Holland uh, or to Northern Europe somewhere. And they did, uh, they did some clobbering as well in England. Clobbering is just where they add colors over the blue and white. And uh, it was sort of a tradition where you, you would buy, uh, uh, you would get blue and white porcelain shipped in during the Kangxi period and in, 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 in through the China trade period, the 18th, 18th century, um, uh, you know, Chin Lung. And workshops in Europe Europe would redecorate them over the blue. So in, in, in these cases, so here you have the underglazed blue background that was added uh, at the time these were made. And when they got to Europe, they would they would add new colors to them. And in this particular color, this lime green and these vibrant yellows were quite popular. And then they had these sort of rosy red, almost salmon uh, colored pinks and uh, sort of typical of the period. And what was nice about these, they still had their original lids. Uh, which is quite unusual. Uh, usually the lids are long gone. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them had a crack in it or something. But still, these are uh, quite rare, and there are people who collect only clobberwares. And this was a nice set, uh, quite unusual. And they had the fritting that often accompanies Kangxi uh, square slab constructed vases. These would be rolled out, the clay would be pressed together, and they have these sharp corners, and air bubbles and whatnot would get in there during the firing, and they'd pop and blister and have little problems. But Everybody expects them. Anyway, these went, I think, very reasonably. $610. There may have been a little bit of, uh, uh, yeah, rim repaired. Uh, and the other one was apparently fine. It just had rim frits. Pretty typical of these because these were used. These bottles were used heavily in Europe and, and households 
um, as, 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 as uh, serving, serving bottles. Anyway, they, that was a great thing, and it's unusual to get a pair, all right, and they're quite nice. So I think $610 is perfectly fine. And then over here on what's coming up uh, uh, this week, a few things that are closing. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, we're going to put this in the newsletter this week because a few people have asked me about rugs. And I don't often put rugs from eBay on because we don't have really the time to look. But I, I was actually looking for a rug for my own house. And I came across this, and we're giving it some thought. But if you want to buy it, go ahead because I have another one I also like. But this is a really nice early 20th century Harris carpet, and it looks to be in wonderful condition. It's 8 by 10 feet. This is a very good rug, a uh, very, very pretty rug. The colors are still vibrant and strong on it. They, they, they don't look too hot. Uh, the blues are quite nice, these beautiful different shades of uh, very dark blue, light blue, medium blue, nice-looking greens, and so forth. Perfectly nice-looking carpet. Very, very nice, and the pile looks good on it, too. And somebody's asking, they're just asking $2,550 for it. It's a seller in, uh, uh, let's see, Floissant, Missouri, in the Midwest. Ship $55 shipping here to Gloucester, so the shipping is obviously reasonable. He's not making money on the shipping, I can tell you that. But very nice carpet. If you're looking for a beautiful rug for your, for your bedroom or somewhere, this is a nice-looking rug, I think. I think it really is. Uh, you know, contact the seller, but uh, good-looking carpet and uh, not overpriced at all for an antique uh, Harris in, in those colors. Harises can get washed out and be, get very unattractive, but that, that one still looks quite good to me. All right. If it was in New York, you'd pay eight or nine thousand for it pretty quickly, maybe fifteen. All right, now on to other things that are coming up. Is this? These this is something. This is a pair of early twentieth century cloisonne vases with these giant relief work peaches on it, and uh, these are pretty rare. They turn up once in a while. Bonhams has had them over the years, as I recall. Uh, they're very very big. And uh, I think the seller has, here's a pair of them. I don't know whose uh, auction this was. A pair of them, they brought 30,000 bucks. Whoop, here come the fire department. Sorry, we got the windows. Even though it's cold, it's, I'll get out here today. It was 30, it snowed yesterday and it was 30 degrees this morning when I got up. Anyway, this is a really nice piece of cloisonne. It is old, it's just amazingly big. Really, really big piece of cloisonne, um, and it is so far up to $380. It's got four days to go. Um, I think it's probably you know, uh, a, a, you know, worth three to five thousand. Uh, anyway, we'll see where it goes from here. But it's a nice big one, big, big piece with the peaches on it, very symbolic of uh, birthdays and so forth, and uh, a nice thing in a beautiful deep yellow color. And I think it was in great condition. And then this, this is coming up. If you're a Nain King porcelain buyer, you might check this out. It's got a couple of minor hairlines and faults, but very minor. And a similar one this week sold that had, I think, a restored handle. Um, uh, ended up selling for about $400. This one is closing in seven days. It's up to 10 bucks. It just went on. It will be on the newsletter page this week. Miguel Larry is selling some things. He's got some great things. He's got a punch bowl we're going to get to in a minute that's absolutely fabulous. Here it is. Um, this is a, a Yongchen period uh, a punch bowl with white enamels. This isn't some another enamel that faded and came off. They use white enamels against a white ground. You have this beautiful, very fluid-looking overglazed blue enamel coming up here, and then gilding on the on the leaf tips and so forth. Here's a picture of the interior. Um, typical Yongchen uh, period decoration. Uh, what was interesting about it was that the foot rim looks very Kangxi. All right. If, if this was on the back of any other piece of porcelain, you would swear that's a Kangxi foot rim. The way it's done, the color, the tone, the smoothness to it, it's rounded. Uh, Yongchen feet so, quite often are a little more V-shaped. But at any rate, uh, this is a Yongchen bowl, absolutely rare, gilded flowers, on and on and on. Here's another shot there. Here it is. It's got a couple of little frits and bubbles out of the rim, which is not unusual. This could be early Yongchen period. Uh, and there it is again. Uh, very, very nice. It's about 10 inches in diameter. Uh, an absolutely lovely bowl. Absolutely lovely. And if you're scratching your head saying you haven't seen one of these before, it's because you haven't. Uh, it's a fairly rare type, and uh, uh, it's up to $149 uh, U.S. It's got seven days to go, and it may fly under the radar because it's an unusual form and type. You don't see them very often. If you find them, it's typically most often in Northern Europe and England. Uh, you're not going to find any of these. You know, these were not imported in the United States during the China trade period. This was long before that began, so unless they were brought over from Europe, you're not likely to see them too much in the U.S. This particular seller is in the U.K., uh, in London, and uh, it's a very, very nice bowl. 
And if you know, uh, if you love it, you know, don't be shy to, to spend several thousand on it. All right, right now it's at a bargain price, but uh, it'll get there. It'll get there. And then over here to this, our, our pals Joni's up in Canada. They have a sale coming up. They've got a couple of nice things in it. And um, is this a very nice, uh, probably early 19th century, maybe late 18th, late 18th century uh, Celadon incised. Uh, nice looking bat handles on the side with uh, lo loopholes for the ropes. Nice looking uh, celadon, uh, uh, under, you know, cut out uh, like bamboo shoots or leaves and so forth. A nice example. And the potting shape on it's quite nice. And uh, it's up to $1,525. It closes uh, next Tuesday. Uh, how big was this thing? So I recall it was around 10 inches. My memory. I want to double check my own memory here. Uh, 11 inches tall. 11 inches tall or 11 inches wide? Wait a minute. Uh, and 10 inches wide. Okay, there we go. But a nice looking example, really nice looking example. Get one good look at that. Uh, this is a good looking Chinese uh, pot to me. And uh, I expect it'll probably bring four to 6,000 in the end, but very nice. And uh, then they also have this up, this uh, sort of clear to loon, uh, vertical crackle uh, jar, 19th century, late 19th, mid to late 19th century. But uh, it's up to four hundred and eight dollars, uh, and he has it listed. They have it listed as eighteenth and nineteenth century. I don't think it is. I think it's a little older than that, or a little newer than that. But it doesn't matter. It's a very pretty pot, beautiful color, and it's up to four hundred dollars. Closes uh, on Tuesday. I think it'll do a bit better. I think it'll probably get up to a fifteen hundred dollar plus range. And then, uh, then this, the uh, tiger, uh, tiger behind the tree plate. I love this because everybody, those of you who watch my videos know that I love uh, animals in these, uh, in these, uh, pa in these painted uh, porcelains. And here you have this very cool, almost Korean-looking tiger. You don't see tigers often in Japanese, uh, Chinese porcelain. All right, this is uh, Chinese. Uh, it's got this, uh, it's a Republic period dish, obviously. There's the back of it and so forth. But nice looking. And here you have the dragon coming down out of the clouds, chasing the pearl. And you have this very, very, uh, uh, it's almost comical looking tiger coming out from behind a tree. And he's about to pounce on the poor rooster. I don't think the rooster knows what's coming. And you have this water buffalo over here that looks like something out of a cartoon. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Anyway, uh, the, the estimate on it is, um, uh, well, the price on it right now is, uh, it's up to $395. It's got a bunch of bids. I hope nobody's buying this, uh, the, the rain mark on the bottom because it's not right, I don't believe. I think it's later than that, but we'll see. Okay. Anyway, that's it for the week. If you enjoy the videos, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, visit us over at uh, bitemout.com, get the newsletter, uh, uh, join the forum over there. Uh, we have a forum on bitemout.com. A lot of people use it during the week. There's some nice conversations. They're nice people. Um, it's, it, a lot, there are other Asian art forums out there with things that people get sort of aggressive and nasty with each other at times. Uh, we don't put up with that over there. Uh, Mark Adams is the, is, uh, sort of keeps an eye on things, does a hell of a good job. And, um, and the new Bitamount Live site, check it out. It's filling up. There's a hundred, I forget how many things are on there this week. I think about 50 more things got added this week. It's growing. And uh, some sales are happening, which is good. And uh, we want to see it get up at, you know, up into the thousands of listings. And, and then, then, then you'll see a lot of traffic as, as Google picks all that up. All right, so uh, if, you, if you're gonna sell on there, sell. Keep your prices smart. Don't, don't, don't look at the highest price you can possibly find on the internet when setting your price. Uh, you know, pick, pick the median range that you see on other sites or similar things, uh, and because uh, you're there to sell it. You're not there to start your own museum, I hope. All right, uh, but otherwise, everybody's been great. Uh, getting interesting questions, things that we're looking ahead to adding as that site grows a bit. And uh, that's it. Have a great weekend. We're, we are supposed to get up into the 60s here tomorrow. It's hard to believe because right now it's in the mid, mid to late upper 30s and the sun's out. Uh, but such is life in New England. And uh, have, a, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. And we're working on some things. And we'll have some more videos up once we finish the one that we're working on um, on the uh, sale in London with uh, bottoms. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.